Hello, amigos. Now, uh, welcome to Walking and Talking with Phoenix, or... What? With Phoenix? Pretty catchy, right? What? What are we going to be talking about today? Anyway, food for thought. We're going to talk a little bit about love and fear. Now, a lot of people have a tendency to dichotomize, you know, things, to cut everything up into polarized groups, good and evil, and, you know, light and darkness, and love and fear. So, you know, today I'm going to be talking about love and fear, and I'm going to be talking about how I don't think that they are exactly opposites, unless you count the absence of something as an opposite of something. Now, when I think of love, I think of love as like the sun, you know, it casts out its rays of light, touching everything, and everything it touches, it nourishes and it brings to life. And that's kind of what love does, you know, it's a healing, regenerative, empowering, and life-giving source of energy, is love. And then you have fear. Now, I don't think fear is anything in particular. I don't think it's anything substantial. Half the time, it's but shadows in the mind, I think. Or realities produced from shadows and unrealistic perceptions, distortions, and expectations. But if you look at fear, I think another way you can describe it is if you've got, imagine the sun and it's casting its light, something blocking that light. Top the mind into you. How do you do? If you've got something blocking that light from the sun, you know, there's a patch of grass or there's a patch of flowers, you know, it's not receiving that light. And that, that patch of grass or flowers, it's going to wither and it's going to die eventually because it's not receiving the light it needs to be nourished to full health and to foster its growth. Same with love. If something is blocking the light of love and, and, and it's blocking you from being able to receive that light of love, then fear starts producing inside and sadness as a result of that depression. You know, so that's the basic idea is I think that there are things that happen in our lives, you know, whether it be traumatic experiences, times where people break our trust, or, you know, we've become misled or we've become to expect one thing and receive something else entirely. And all these different instances where we have allowed ourselves to be vulnerable and allowed ourselves to open up and blossom, so to speak, and share our fruits of love. You know, sometimes, or maybe for some people, a lot of times, we've had those fruits thrown back at us. We've had those fruits just drop to the ground and decay and never being received in the first place and unrecognized, unacknowledged. And everything that we've given in the name of love has ended up hitting us back in the face. And it's been painful and anything but lovely. So I think after we've allowed ourselves to open and be vulnerable and in order to connect with love and receive love and give it, and then after having all that nasty stuff happen as a result, that we tend to put blocks up. You know, whether we do it consciously or not, we tend to put these walls up. And sometimes we put turrets on those walls to defend our ground and make sure nobody comes close to penetrating past that perimeter and into where we feel volatile and, you know, afraid. And this is what I mean when I talk about fear. There's this situations that happen that cause us to protect ourselves with these walls out of fear. And that blocks us from being able to become vulnerable and express love and receive it. You know, you might meet someone and they try to, you know, maybe you experience a really deep connection with them maybe to a similar depth that you've experienced with only one other person in the past who you were really attached to and you loved deeply and that person you know cheated on you or broke your heart or for whatever reason you broke up but it was horrible painful and you never forgot and the wounds still yet to fully heal so you're in love with someone now who reminds you of that situation and automatically you close up you find yourself no longer being as present as you could be or as you were to begin with because you're too lost in the anticipation, in the fear of what might happen, you know, because it's so similar to what's happened before. So I don't think fear is a force, you know, like light and darkness is, I guess you could say they're opposites, right? But darkness is the absence of light. 
So maybe in a sense, fear is the opposite of love, but fear is just the absence of love caused from blocks and barriers that we place up or have placed up uncontrollably. Now once one becomes aware of this, one can start to investigate inside and review one's life and experiences and take note. What kind of wars have I put up? Where am I protecting myself and not letting things from coming through? And once you realize, you know, those traumas and those causes, if you take in those measures in the first place and for that fear building up, and it's kind of like a dam. If you imagine a big wall being put up, it just builds up over time. The more that you block and disconnect and put off opportunities to love and someone's extending their hand and trying to hold you and you're pushing them away, every time you do that, I think that dam builds up more and more with more energy. You know, and that results in frustration, uh, resent even, you know, sadness, distress in general. So it's good to release that energy and it's not going to happen until you can remove the biggest blocks that are really blocking a substantial amount of energy and making your ability to connect with people really ineffective and weak. So once you realize where your damage has been done, you can set about resolving those unresolved pains. You can go about trying to get your head around what happened and come to terms with it and accept it. And some things we, we leave half resolved in our minds and we try to run away from, but your problems will always follow you and keep manifesting through different situations. So it's better to resolve it when you can. Sometimes it's good to get a have a break. You know, you don't have to do everything on the spot. You know, sometimes you might need to have a break in order to give yourself, oh, that's a cool car. Harlequin, no, I'm mesmerized for sure. Give yourself a break so that you can get some distance and objectivity and detachment from your situation. And then when you come back to it, maybe you can look at it and things are a bit more clear and you're a little bit more realistic and less phased by your emotions, which can cloud your judgment. So as long as the major issues and the major blocks that are stopping the sunlight from hitting all the corners of your soul, so to speak, are dealt with, um, you should be able to one day or many days experience the fruits of love, the most beautiful and sweetest fruits of love with the person of your dreams or the, a range of people in different ways. But it starts from within and it starts with figuring out why you're afraid and where those blocks are and then trying to affirm to yourself once you figure it out why those blocks do not deserve to be there still. Because you don't deserve these blocks. You don't deserve wars to be put up permanently because of temporary situations in your life. We all fall over and we hurt ourselves and we graze our knee, but then the knee heals, broken bones mend, and you're able to run again. It would suck if, like a tooth, once you lose it, it never grows back. That's a, sort, that's a sad situation. Nobody can help that, but you can help mending yourself on an emotional level and I know it's easier said than done, and there's a lot of people that have really deep, fucked up trauma. A lot easier said than done, but it's doable for the most part. I believe that you are in control of your destiny and who you become as a result of your experiences, regardless of how deeply they've afflicted you. And really, if you're determined enough to live a life full of love and light and learning, then you'll seek out the information put it into application and you will see results. So yeah, that's my food for thought right now. And yeah, keep loving. Don't be afraid because fear, it's not even real. It's a shadow produced from obstacles that were built in the past. They have no standing now.